the water in Park Lake looks normal. Even taking a closer look, it looks like it would be safe to swim in. But it's actually not safe. It's come back with high levels of E. coli three weeks in a row. So what could be causing it and what are the solutions? I went in depth to find out the answers. E. coli is actually short for Escherichia coli, and it's something all humans and warm-blooded wildlife already have in their system. E. coli is a bacteria. It's found in our guts. That's Shannon Briggs, a toxicologist with the Water Resources Division with the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. She says E. coli is used in water monitoring as an indicator for fecal contamination. Sometimes these beaches have high E. coli and it causes beach closures and advisories. That's where I come in and offer um, different options for local health departments to see if there's anything we can do to help them. The Mid-Michigan Health Department began testing six lakes for the first time three weeks ago as part of their Bathing Beaches program. Director Liz Braddock says this program is to inform people what they're swimming in. So that people can make an informed decision if they are at maybe at risk of, of illness or at risk of getting sick if they were to accidentally ingest the water that has E. coli. Out of the six they started testing, Braddock says only one came back with high E. coli levels. Now, first week of sampling, we noted that the water quality at Park Beach was um, concerning and that it was above the standard for um, total body count, that meaning for swimming in, in the lake. The township closed the beach after the second results exceeded the standard set by Eagle. In Michigan, we have our water quality standards for E. coli for swimming, and that number is 300 E. coli present in 100 milliliter water sample. The first sample in Park Lake showed 443.2, the second grew to 756.2, and the third, which was taken earlier this week, dropped back down to 443.2. When we do the sampling, we wade into um, waist-deep water, and then we take three samples in the same within close proximity. Briggs says E. coli is almost always present in lakes, rivers, and streams because they aren't filtered. These are natural water bodies. They have naturally occurring organisms in them. And E. coli is one of those organisms that can be present. And when people ingest water that has more than the water quality amount? There were epidemiological studies done in the past that showed when 300 E. coli were present, that there was an increased um, incidence of illnesses reported by swimmers. Symptoms of E. coli include upset tummy, nausea, uh, you can get sick, um, gastroenteritis. Eagle helps health departments answer the questions everyone asks. Where is it coming from and how can we resolve that so our beaches stay clean. While the health department hasn't traced it back to the source yet, evidence on the beach shows the geese could be the main issue. Sometimes you go to a beach and you'll see goose droppings or things like that. Well, when it rains, all of those goose droppings are going to get washed back into the water. Other causes of E. coli could be humans or a sewage leak somewhere underground that needs to be fixed. Sometimes things leak or break. And we never knew that that happened until we monitor a beach and then we start finding something where the E. coli is high. So what exactly could have caused the dramatic change from over 700 E. coli to 400 in only a week? It's all going to be dependent on which way the wind is blowing sometimes, how much the wind, how, how high are the waves? Are the waves crashing onto the beach and then dragging all of the sand back down into the water? How do you fix it? Briggs says if it's geese, you can use dogs. There's some beaches in Michigan where they have uh, border collies patrolling the beach. And that's just because when a border collie is running across the beach, they like to bark. Or relocate the birds. There's also a goose roundup. Sometimes over, you know, you would work with the Department of Natural Resources to get the appropriate permissions and permits. But one main way to get rid of the geese is to stop feeding them. If you're feeding the birds, they're going to want to be there because you're feeding them. So if you don't want your beach closed, you know, you, you need to not, you, you can't, you 
you need to stop feeding the birds. Some beaches in Michigan have even had to move their swimming area to another part of the water. There have been some beach remediation projects across the state, so we've seen some long-term corrections that have made these beaches just awesome, excellent, no more problems. Briggs says while these solutions have worked well on other beaches, every situation is different. Every one of them is unique and they have different hydrological patterns, they have different geology, they have different sources that come in and flow in and flow out. And that doesn't mean the E. coli will never come back. So we just have to take each one and look at the information that we have and try to make improvements as we go. The Mid-Michigan Health Department is still trying to determine where exactly the E. coli could be coming from to get those levels back under 300. Your neighborhood reporter in Bath Township, Michaela Temple, Fox 47 News.